Centralized exchange versus decentralized exchange. Whether you are a new investor or have been investing for a long time, you have probably heard about two types of cryptocurrency exchanges, sexes and dexes. And in this video, I'll talk about what cryptocurrency exchange is, what is the difference between centralized exchange and decentralized exchange, and which one you should use. Welcome back to another video of Web3 Crypto. I'm Lamia and in this channel we are all about diving deep into the area of crypto space and while you are watching this video if you found this valuable and helpful on your journey you know what to do smash that like subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future videos cryptocurrency exchange is it's a marketplace where you can buy sell or swap cryptocurrency coins or tokens a centralized exchange is the first generation platforms and a decentralized exchange are the new generation platforms cryptocurrency exchanges you are familiar with are most likely centralized exchange such as binance coinbase ftx kraken and gate as they are one of the biggest and most trusted out there. If you want to set up an account with Binance, watch my video of Binance tutorial step by step by clicking the link in the description below. Although sexes have ruled for many years, there is a massive growth in the demand for DEXs. So what is the difference between sexes and DEXs? Both of sexes and DEXs have their advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about Custody. This is one of the main features of a DEX. You maintain the control of your private keys, of your crypto, as there is no central authority, instead they replace the central authority with a smart contract. So you just directly connect your hardware wallet or software wallet to the exchange to execute your trades. So since you retain custody of your crypto on a DEX, that's also why they are referred to as a non-custodial exchanges. However, in centralized exchange model, it's the service provider who has specific control over your funds and account. Another thing about the centralized exchange is that they are custodial, meaning they store users' funds under their wallets and control all your private keys. And having a third party with some control comes handy in case you forget your login details or lose access to your account. They can help you regain access by resetting the password of course, you have to have access to your email. The downside, however, is you could lose all your funds if the centralized exchange gets hacked. That's why for some, the risk of trusting the exchange with your funds is mitigated or lowered to an acceptable level of choosing a reputable exchange. Regulation. So when it comes to regulation, centralized exchange, they are official companies. They have offices and employees and even shareholders, and they fall under strict regulation as they need to obtain operating licenses in many jurisdictions, making them more liable to follow countries' rule and regulation. Now, being centralized means that users are required to provide personal data and bank details when signing in with the exchange, to avoid money laundering and part of the KYC Know Your Customer and AML Anti-Money Laundering Compliance. On the other hand, DEXs, they have no company or offices. They are basically just a team of developers who has built the protocol for the exchange using smart contract. And their ultimate goal is to eventually move the governance of this protocol to the token holders like you and I. And because they are decentralized, no regulation apply to them, no KYC, no AML. Anyone can access this exchange on a permissionless basis and adhering to the regulation is up to everyone's personal choice. Transaction. In a centralized exchange, trading at the platform is done by centralized intermediary using the order book model. This is also the way traditional stock exchange such as New York Stock Exchange and Nasdaq works where orders are recorded and validated. All the transactions happen off-chain within the exchange's database. It's only when a customer requests a withdrawal from the exchange that the transactions happen via the blockchain, depending on the coin or a token. When it comes to DEXs, transactions happen on the blockchain. Trading and orders are executed on-chain, peer-to-peer or with a liquidity provider, using smart contract that we are going to talk about next. Liquidity and volume. 
Centralized exchange have a broader client base and therefore a higher trading volume as multiple market participants buy and sell different types of digital assets to provide a constant flow of supply and demand, enabling exchanges to maintain high liquidity. DEXs, on the other hand, don't have multiple users buying and selling crypto assets, and so they have a lower trade volume and lower liquidity. However, this is changing. Here we can see the Ethereum on the chain DEX volume, with the largest DEX being Uniswap, turning almost a billion worth of crypto in 24 hour period, in bear market condition. At the time of making this video, in DEX model, there are a lot of types of DEXs, but the main ones are order book DEXs, DEX aggregators, and automated market maker or AMMs. In this video, we are just going to talk about AMMs as they are the most popular in the market today. So AMM system uses smart contract to address liquidity issues. The smart contract and AMM DEXs don't match buy, order, and sell orders. Instead, they leverage liquidity pools of pre-founded pools of assets. These liquidity pools in AMM DEXs are funded by users called liquidity providers or LP. In simple term, liquidity pool is the pooling of crypto funds from whoever wants to help provide liquidity to facilitate trade. And that crypto pool or collection of funds is locked in a smart contract. And liquidity providers get LP tokens that represent their ownership in the pool and they get rewarded by transaction fee based on their respective pairs. You can get your crypto assets back with your shares of the profit by redeeming and giving back the LP token. Beside being allowed to execute orders and earn interest, you can also stake your crypto and earn crypto rewards. However, liquidity providers may suffer from something that's called impermanent loss that I'm going to cover in another video. And the best example of an AMM indexes include Banker, Balancer, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, Curve, and Uniswap. New features. DEXs enable users to borrow funds to leverage their position and they lend funds to passively earn interest or provide liquidity to collect trading fees. DEXs also enable traders to automatically convert one crypto to another. Unfortunately, sexes do not necessarily support these additional features, but they offer different unique features such as derivatives, margin trading, limit and stop loss, and other type of execution in the spot market. Now let's summarize. Let's see the main differences of sexes and DEXs. KYC. On the sexes, KYC is required. On the DEXs, it's not needed. For the trading in sexes is intermediary, meaning liquidity comes from a provider and the transaction fees go directly to the exchange. In DEXs, it's peer-to-peer -peer basis. All liquidity comes from network. Participants receive passive income on their trading crypto assets and receive portion of all transaction fees that goes across the path they provided liquidity to. Security. Sexes, the user's assets are stored within the exchange as the private keys of the users are all under the control of the exchange and since all the funds of the people using centralized exchange are stored on the exchange servers, they are usually target of hackers and if that happens, you may lose your assets as well. For example, in 2014, Madcox exchange got hacked and lost 850,000 Bitcoin. The key takeaway from the famous saying, not your keys, not your coins. If you don't hold your keys, you don't hold ownership of your coins. Also, sexes are companies, so they do bear the risk of the possibility of going bankrupt and shutting down. DEX's security is high as it's built using protocol that is released by smart contract, completely immutable on the blockchain, if the code is deployed correctly. This makes it completely unhackable. Also indexes the private keys and funds are all under the user's control. Since there is no control point, this makes hacks very difficult, hence very secure. Fiat. In sexes, you have fiat on ramp and off ramp. It allows you to use your debit card or credit card or bank transfer to deposit fiat currency and convert it into crypto. In DEXs, you have only crypto. There is no fiat on ramp. To get started, you need to deposit fiat currency on the centralized exchange then convert it to crypto and then send it to your wallet on the decentralized exchange. Usability. For the centralized exchange, it's user-friendly, easy to use, and there is always support available when needed. For the DEXs, on the other hand, they don't come with support, 
This means if you have an issue, there is nobody to call. You can only use the help of the community online. For the fees for the sexes, they rely on customers' fees. This is the main source of the revenue. They charge relatively high fees to execute trades. In Texas, the absence of intermediary allows for no existence or very small fees. It depends on the exchange and their protocol. And these fees, like I mentioned earlier, goes to the liquidity provider. Crypto assets diversity. For sexes, it's limited. For example, in order for a coin to be listed on Binance Exchange, the coin needs to be vetted, inspected and reviewed and have to satisfy security protocols and also comply with some legal standards. So this makes it easier for a new investor to invest, but this limits the number of coins listed. On the other hand, DEXs have some access to some pretty rare coins. It can include any tokens minted on the blockchain they are built upon, meaning that new projects will likely be listed on these exchanges before they are available on the centralized exchange. Overall, decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges offer a true version of what cryptocurrency is supposed to be about to users. They are decentralized, trustless, anonymous, and fully transparent. As you can see, all transactions that are occurring within the DEX. All of that is what cryptocurrency was supposed to be. Of course, the downside of decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges is they are difficult to use if you have little experience. So what option should you choose? In my opinion, if you are new to cryptocurrency, centralized exchange are a good place to start in your crypto journey. And let's say you want to buy a popular cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. It's easier to buy it from a centralized exchange as you can exchange fiat to cryptocurrency directly within the platform. However, as your education in cryptocurrency grows and you become more confident, you may choose to use a DEX as Decentralized finance opened up a whole new world for users compared to traditional finance as the potential to earn passive income from DeFi is vast as there are a lot of opportunities. However, it's still new testing ground. So you have to do your own research and due diligence before you decide to invest and always only invest what you can afford to lose. Most of us utilize both at different times for different purposes. I personally use both sexes and dexes for a variety of different things as they both have their advantages and disadvantages. This is not financial advice, but in my opinion, it depends on the cryptocurrency you are looking to purchase. In my case, for long holding assets, if they are available in a dex, I will definitely move them to a dex as they are safer there. Also, dexes, they offer the purchase of new gems. I also use sexes for scalping or swing trading, for example. To conclude, as the development of the decentralized exchange progresses, we may see some shift in preferences to more decentralized model. In my opinion, both will coexist. If you are interested in learning more about decentralized finance or yield farming or investing in latest crypto opportunities and how to operate on a DEX, do subscribe to the channel below and check out my other videos. In the meantime, if you have enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.